work in a field called complex fluids engineering. So complex fluids, such as milk, are generally defined as any fluid where the constituents of the fluid are not dissolved as individual molecules, but they exist as very fine particles. They're not actually dissolved, they're dispersed, and these particles interact with each other in the liquid. Maybe they repel each other, maybe they are attracted to each other, maybe they agglomerate with each other. These events that can happen in these fluids ultimately are what dictate the behaviors of these complex fluids. One of the things I particularly enjoy about the field of complex fluids engineering is that we can learn a lot from simple everyday liquids like milk and apply the physical and chemical principles that operate in milk or other complex fluids and use those to come up with innovative ways of designing new technologies, new products, uh, and they may be products that seem to have nothing in common with each other. So the first system I want to talk about today involves a kind of complex fluid we're developing at Carnegie Mellon. It's a nanoparticle polymer brush. Nanoparticles are tiny particles. They're smaller than the wavelength of light, so we can't see them, even in a microscope. The polymer brush refers to a coating that we put on these nanoparticles so that the surfaces are covered with layers of long chain-like molecules called polymers that extend out from the surface of the nanoparticles. We can engineer the composition of these polymer brushes to adapt these nanoparticles to different kinds of technological purposes. The first application I want to talk about today concerns a problem in the remediation of groundwater pollution by chlorinated solvents such as trichloroethylene. The solvent used to be used to clean engine parts. It was very good, but if it was spilled, the solvent is denser than water, so it tends to migrate down through the groundwater and accumulate in underground pools. Several years ago, my colleague in environmental engineering, Greg Lowry, and I had an idea uh, that we could more efficiently clean up these pollutants if we could directly go after the pollutant at the source. In medicine, there's a technique called targeted delivery. The idea is that if you can target cancer chemotherapy drugs to accumulate in the tumor, you can use a lot less of the drug and avoid the toxic side effects of cancer chemotherapy. Our idea was to treat the pollutant source as if it were the tumor. To do this, we enlisted the help of our colleague in the chemistry department, Chris Matuszewski, and we decided to take the treatment agent, which would be an iron nanoparticle, and we wanted to turn it into one of these nanoparticle polymer brushes. And the targeting part came into play in that we designed these polymers so that they would be attracted to the interface between the chlorinated solvent, pollutant, and the water that they're flowing through. These polymers would recognize the surface of the pollutant and help those particles adhere to the surface and accumulate there. And once there, they would react with the pollutant, convert it to non-toxic compounds, while the iron particles essentially just rust away. In thinking about this, we realized that we should be able to design nanoparticle polymer brushes that would also be able to adhere very strongly to a solid surface. And if we can do that, we can coat solid surfaces with nanoparticles that would repel each other so that when two surfaces come into contact, they should have very low friction. They should be able to slide past each other very easily. We should be able to make lubricants based on the same idea of a nanoparticle polymer brush. That was a nice idea, but my student, John Riley, had an even better idea. He realized that he could control the composition of these polymer brushes in such a way that we could control whether or not they would swell on a surface or whether they would shrink on a surface. And now picture two surfaces with layers of these nanoparticle polymer brushes on them. If they're shrunken, those layers can interlock with each other they can have high friction, and they can even behave like adhesives. So imagine you had some sort of underwater glue that would maintain its adhesion as long as we wanted it to, but when we wanted it to release, we could just trigger a change in these nanoparticles, they would release, and then they would slide apart very easily. And to me, this again is the beauty of complex fluids engineering. It's an entire discipline based on seeing connections between widely different fields. Ultimately, all of these were inspired by an analogy to medicine. 